Hello EPS friends! This time we'll see how to create a custom control in .NET MAUI. To do this, I've created this blank solution, which is a project that has absolutely nothing. It's simply a new project created with the Visual Studio template. Let's carry out the first step, which is to create a folder to store your custom controls. So in the Solution Explorer, we will indicate that we want to create a new folder. This is entirely optional. You can choose whether or not to create this folder. In my case, I will do it for better organization. Let's name this folder, for example, My Controls. The next step is to create the control that we want to use as part of the reusable control. To do this, inside the My Controls folder, we will create a new item. We will go to the .NET Mali category, and we are interested in the one called .NET Mali Content View, which has the term XAML in parentheses. We will then use that template and rename it to, for example, Download Loader. You can choose any name, but since our control will simulate a download, or rather allow you to perform some type of file download and provide immediate feedback to the user that something is happening, we chose this name. The next step is to replace the content of the content view. If you've never used a content view, basically it's like a file that you can use in different content pages. A content view also has a property called content, which you can use to populate with some XAML controls in this case. Let's paste a piece of code that I've prepared beforehand, which is this one you can see on the screen. Here, I will only import a namespace that I need. It's this namespace that you can see on the screen. Why is this? Well, because for this demonstration, I'm using a couple of label elements to display content to the user while it's downloading. These controls will be customized a little later so that we can assign values as we wish. Also, notice that we have here a control of type rack linear progress bar, which will allow us to get some feedback on how much has been downloaded of the element we want to download. Basically, some type of progress. Finally, we are using a shadow here to enhance the appearance. In case you don't have access to the Telera controls, you can also use a progress bar. As you can see on the screen, it's a regular progress bar. You just need to assign a name set it to be in row number two, assign a margin, and finally set a random value for the progress. In this case, I used the value 60. With this, we basically have the control ready for us to reuse over and over. The next step is to use this custom control as part of a .NET MAUI project. In my case, as I mentioned earlier, I have a completely clean project. In fact, if I go to mainpage.xaml, you can see that we have here the initial template or content of all the templates or the .NET MAUI template. So the next step is to replace this content with the use of the control. Therefore, I'm going to remove this scroll view and instead I will specify that I want to use a vertical stack layout as you can see on screen with two controls. First, the custom control, and second, the button that will allow us to start or simulate a download of a file or something we want to download. The next step then is to use the main space so that our file or project recognizes this control tag. To do this, I will indicate that I want to create a new prefix XMLNS. We will call it controls, which will be equal to CLR namespace. Here, we will find the name of our solution, and finally, we will locate the namespace where our control is located. In this case, since it is in the folder called My Controls, we need to use this namespace. With this, you can see that the error is resolved correctly. Once we have done this, we can start the emulator, any of the available ones, and we will see how what we have done so far looks. After a few seconds, we can see that we already have the component ready. It looks quite good, as we have customized it in a fairly nice way. We also have a button that would allow us to start the download. Now this control is not very useful at the moment because, as you'd notice, part of the XAML file has some preset values. For example, for the labels, we have a preset text. For the value of the progress bar, we also have a preset value. Ideally, to effectively use this control, we should be able to access these properties to modify them from some point. So what we're going to do is create something called bindable properties. A bindable property allows the extension of a common language runtime property 
or CLR using the bindable property type instead of a field as a property is defined. In summary, this allows the use of these properties with data binding as well as setting default values, validating values, executing actions when they change. How can we do this? Well, let's stop the project and navigate to the code behind of our control, which is the file downloader.saml.cs visible on the screen. In the case you want to create a regular property as we usually do, you would likely have code similar to what you see on the screen, which would allow us to modify a field called title and access this property both to retrieve that value and to assign a corresponding value. So, to create a bindable property, we need to change the field as we normally define it, and I will replace it with code that I have previously written, which is the code for a bindable property as you can see on the screen. This is how a bindable property is defined. Here we can see some characteristics, such as the need to specify the bindable property identifier, or the bindable property in this case, through the main title property, with this specific signature, as you can see on the screen. You can see that it is static in its read and will pipe bindable property. This signature must always be used when creating a bindable property, and by convention, it should end with the word property, as you can see in this example. You can also notice that a method called create is invoked, which initializes the property with the indicated parameters. It should also indicate what the name of the bindable property is, which by convention should be the same as the identifier shown above, but without the word property, that is, it remains simply as title. The type of the property is also specified, which in this case is of type string, as we want to display the percentage completed or complete in text, and that is why we use a string type. It is also indicated what the type of the object containing the property is, which in this case, the containing class is called downloader. Another thing to note is that a default value is defined, as you can see on the screen, which will be used in case no value is assigned to this property in order to avoid errors. Finally, in our specific case, we are defining a method that will be executed when the value of the property changes. In this case, we access the custom control through the instance to modify the text property of the control called title control, which you can see on the screen and is a label that shows the progress. An important point is that we need to use the bindable property in the CLR property. That is, we must change this property to the following code. Here, we need to use this method called getValue, performing the conversion to the type of the property, which in this case is of type string, and the bindable property, which is title property. To assign a value, we use the method called setValue, passing in as parameters the bindable property and the value we want to assign. So with this, our first bindable uh, property is ready. You can see that we have a successful build, although Visual Studio shows us that there is some kind of error. Now that you understand generally how to create a bindable property, we will change the contents of this class to add some additional valuable properties. As you can see on the screen, we have created a property to change the title, another to change the subtitle, and another to change the progress property. Each of these bindable properties has an associated CLR property which basically works in conjunction with the bindable properties to update and retrieve values. Similarly, as part of the constructor, when initializing the control, we simply assign the default value to the graphical interface control to show something to the users. I am going to build. Now we have a successful build. The next step is to go back to the control where the custom control we created is located, which in this case is controls downloader. Notice that if we start writing, for example, title, we already have the bindable property available. We can modify, for instance, the property or the value to indicate title test. We also have subtitle available. For example, let's change the value to subtitle test. Finally, we also have the progress available. Let's indicate that we want 25% progress. We save the changes and let's see how this looks in the emulator. Done. When we have the application in the emulator, you can notice that we already have the custom control. Observe that the properties have been affected, but we have set the values as specified in the XAML code for both the title, subtitle, and also for the progress bar control value. 
so the control is working correctly with the bindable properties we have created previously. Now, since these properties we've created are bindable properties, it means we can bind them to, for example, a view model. Let's proceed to perform another demonstration. We will create a new class in the project called, for example, main view model. I will paste here a piece of code that I have previously created. This is a view model specifically for this page. What I want you to see is that I'm using the Microsoft MBVM toolkit first. This greatly simplifies the code we had by inheriting from an observable object and also allows us to apply the observable property attribute to each property, thus creating a behind-the-scenes property for managing these properties for the graphical interface, which notifies the graphical interface that a change has occurred, eliminating the need to create or implement, I notified property changed. Here we are specifying the three properties that will modify the values with default values. We are also utilizing this partial void on property changed so that when a change occurs in the U property, the title value is updated with a new modified value. Additionally, we are creating a command which essentially simulates the progress being updated because some type of download is happening behind the scenes. The next step is to modify the graphical interface to utilize these properties we have created in the view model. So let's quickly go back to main page.xaml. I'm going to replace the code here. Here we have it available, and you can see that each of the properties is being linked to the corresponding bindable property that is part of the view model. Similarly, the button has an associated command found in the view model called download command. Finally, for everything that makes sense or function correctly, we're going to the main page.xaml.cs file where we will add the line to set the binding context equal to a new instance of main view model so that we can essentially use the view model from the XAML page. With these changes we have made, we will run the application once again. Notice that we now have the custom control, but this time using the values we defined in the view model. I will press the button to start the simulation of downloading the file. Notice that everything is working correctly. The value is being displayed in the title property and the value of the progress bar is also being updated, achieving our objective of creating a custom control. I must mention that there are many other ways to create custom controls, but we will likely cover that in a later video. Finally, I want to emphasize that if you want to access the source code you've seen in this demonstration, you can find the link in the video description. See you in the next video.